Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast Special Edition Series. We're going to go over each and every 2024 NCAA Men's College Basketball Conference Tournament. Um, this is the 21st of 32 episodes, and this will focus on the American Tournament. Um, this will be held at Dickey's Arena in Fort Worth, Texas. Um, first round will be Wednesday, March 13th. Second round, Thursday, March 14th. Quarterfinals, Friday, March 15th. Semifinals, Saturday, March 16th. And the championship on Sunday, March 17th. So we will go over the seedings for the American. Um, obviously, the conference is bigger with a couple additions. So um, this tournament used to be Thursday to Sunday. Now it's obviously Wednesday to Sunday. So without further ado, here we go. Um, the number one seed, a surprising 23-6 and six record overall, 16-2 in conference play, the South Florida Bulls. Your two seed, 24 and 7 overall, 14 and 4 in conference play, the Florida Atlantic Owls. Your three seed, 19 and 11 overall, 13 and 5 in conference play, the Charlotte 49ers. Your four seed, 20 and 11 overall, 12 and 6 in conference play, the UAB Blazers. Fifth, 22 and 9 overall, 11 and 7 in conference play, the Memphis Tigers. Six, 20 and 11. Overall, 11-7 in conference play. The SMU Mustangs, 7th. 17-13 overall, 10-8 in conference play. The North Texas Mean Green, 8th. 14-17 overall, 7-11 in conference play. The East Carolina Pirates, 9. 16-14 overall, 7-11 in conference play. The Tulsa Golden Hurricane, 10. 14-16 overall, 5-13 in Conference play, the Tulane Green Wave. 11th, the Temple Owls, 12 and 19 overall, 5 and 13 in conference play. Your 12th seed, the Wichita State Shockers, 13 and 18 overall, 5 and 13 in conference play. Your 12th seed, um, 11 and 20 overall, 5 and 13 in conference play, the Rice Owls, and the 14th seed, 11 and 20 overall, 5 and 13 in conference play, the UTSA Road Runners. All right, so. It all begins Wednesday, March 13th, 1 o'clock Eastern, 12 o'clock Central, 13 seed Rice, 12 seed Wichita State. Um, so, interesting matchup, obviously. Um, Rice, obviously, coming over from CUSA. Wichita State has been in the American for several years now after coming over from the Missouri Valley when they were a power in that league. Best player on the court could either be Wichita's Colby Rogers or Rice's Travis Evie. Um, I project Wichita by a third. Um, I should say three tenths. Total 146. So I'm going to advance the Shockers of Wichita State. Second of two first round games. 14 seed UTSA, 11 seed Temple. Um, Temple obviously had the uh, scandal with UAB, so it'd be funny if those two teams met up in the uh, in this tournament somehow. But I doubt it. They're not on the same side of the bracket. Um. So, the best player on the court, um, Heisier Miller of Temple, although. Um, it would have been Jordan Ivy Curry, or it could still be. He was just hurt a lot this year. Um, earlier in the year, he was injured, so um, maybe he'll be the guy, the best guy on the court. But um, I have Temple. He projected one point three total, one fifty two and three fifths. So I'm going to advance Temple. Second round, 9-seed Tulsa, 8-seed East Carolina. Um, Tulsa has a stud in P.J. Haggerty, averaging almost 21 a game. Um, and R.J. Felton's good, too, of um, East Carolina. He averages over 17 a game. Um, should be a, an interesting game, though. I only have East Carolina... Three quarters favored. 
Total 143 and 720, so I'm going to advance Eastern Carolina. Second of four second-round games. 12 seed Wichita State, 5 seed Memphis. Memphis underachieved in conference play, but their non-con is pretty good. Um... They have a really good player in David Jones, averaging over 21 a game. Um, one of their better players, uh, Naquan Tomlin, missed um, the first part of the year and it came back. Um, and then Javon Quinterly is good, too. Um, I have Memphis by 10 and a quarter over Wichita State, so I'm going to have them advance. Third of four second round games, ten seed Tulane, seven seed North Texas. Um, Tulane underachieved relative to expectations this year. Um, Kevin Cross almost eighteen a game and over seven boards a game, over four and a half assists. So he's a really good all around player. Um, and then North Texas. Um, new to the league, a little bit of a transition phase. Um, Jason Edwards over 19 a game. Um, I do project North Texas 2.8, total 146 and 7 tenths. So I'm going to advance North Texas. In the last of four second round games, 11 seed Temple, 6 seed SMU. Um, SMU has a, a two sum um, Zurich Phelps and Chuck Harris. Um, I project them nine three quarters over Temple, so I'm going to advance them. Quarterfinals Friday, March fifteenth, eight seed East Carolina, one seed South Florida. The Bulls have been really fun to watch. Um, they're on the bubble, obviously. Um, we'll go over the resume later in the show. Um, Chris Youngblood's a really good player, and so is Selton Miguel. I project USF eight and three quarters, so I'm going to advance them past. East Carolina, second or four quarterfinal games, five seed Memphis, four seed UAB. UAB's had a solid year in conference play. Um, very well balanced team led by Excel Lenderberg, but I actually have Memphis favored by nine tenths. So I'm going to advance the Tigers. Third or four quarterfinal game, seven seed North Texas, two seed FAU. FAU, the darlings of last year, making the final four. Um, I. Th- not a huge fan of them when it comes to um from a national NCAA tournament standpoint, but um I do believe that they have a real chance and a to uh win this conference tournament and um get a good seed number in the tournament. Um Janelle Davis is really good, averaging over eighteen a game. Um, I project Florida Atlantic by eight, so I'm going to advance them past North Texas. Last of four quarterfinal games, six seed SMU, three seed Charlotte. Charlotte was a big overachiever this year. Um, they're well balanced too. Led by Lukai Patterson, averaging 14 and a half a game. Um, so, um, I do project SMU as a one and a half point favorite, though. Um, I just think that that duo Phelps and Harris and the game being played in, uh, Fort Worth, I think could help SMU. So, um, I'm going to advance the Mustangs. The two semifinal games. So I have a five and a six seed in the semifinals in this bracket. Um, so the first of two semifinal games, 6 seed SMU, 2 seed FAU. Should be a really good game. Um, Florida Atlantic's experience, I think, will prevail here. I have them favored by 5.4, so I'm going to advance them. Second of two, 5 seed Memphis, 1 seed South Florida. I think this is going to be a really good game. Memphis, um, obviously, um, a really talented team that just didn't live up to expectations this season. I have South Florida one and three quarters, so I'm going to advance them. And in the championship game, two seed FA, one seed South Florida, in state rivals, great game. This is what we want. 
the two best teams in the conference. Um, I think Janelle Davis is the different series, the best player on the court, FAU. I have them projected 1.7. So the Florida Atlantic Owls, I have winning the 2024 America American Athletic Conference Tournament as they'll get the auto bid in. Um, at large, um, I think if South Florida loses in the uh, in the final, I think they're in Dayton. But if they win the auto bid, I think they'll be a 10 seed. I know it's a big discrepancy. Um, so they lost to Tulsa. Um, they beat FAU, which is huge for their at-large resume. They beat Memphis, who was ranked at the time 10th. Um, that win doesn't look so good now, obviously, but it's a, win, a team with the, that was ranked at the time. It was, a, at the time, a really good win. Um, they lost to UMass. We're talking about UMass's resume in the 810 show earlier. Um, they beat Florida State. That's a win over an ACC team. Loyola Chicago is a really good win for South Florida. And they beat Northern Iowa. The Central Michigan loss hurts. The main loss, if they don't make the tournament as an at-large, that's the one we point to, home main. They lost against Hofstra, who's still in the Colonial Tournament as we talk today. Um, so I do think South Florida gets in. But I think they'll be in Dayton, probably the last team in. And maybe they'll play like St. John's or... Seton Hall or somebody like that. Villanova. Um, um, so, NIT, Charlotte, UAB, Memphis for sure, SMU. Memphis might be, if they make the championship game and lose, say they beat South Florida or whomever and they lose to Florida Atlantic in the title game, they're going to be a potentially a one seed in the uh, in the NIT. Um, so um, that would be interesting. Um, CBI, probably North Texas, maybe Tulsa. Um, most outstanding player of this tournament has to be Davis of FAU. Um all right, so value in this tournament. Um, FAU is a favorite, plus 170. Memphis is plus 440, so it's SMU. South Florida is 5 to 1. North Texas is plus 950. Charlotte's 15. UAB is 18. East C one hundred twenty, Tulane one hundred fifty, so is Wichita, Tulsa's one eighty, Rice and UTSA two fifty to one. The team that I think has some value on the board is actually South Florida at five. Um the reason why SMU has a good number is because of where the games are being played. Memphis has a good number because they get favoritism in the betting market because they're Memphis and Patty Hardaway's their coach. Um but I do think South Florida five to one has some value, and if it's double like any of the double digit teams, I like a couple of these teams. I think Charlotte and UAB each have some value, fifteen and eighteen respectively. Um, North Texas, mm, they should be double digits. But any of these crazy long shots. Tulane might be the crazy long shot at 150 to 1. Just like a buck on it. And then say they make the semis and you could bet on FAU against them and hedge. So that's just a fun, like, any weird team in the triple digits that could make it interesting. I think it could be Tulane with Cross there. At one fifty to one, I think is that's the uh, the crazy one. Um, some coaching. Um, obviously, the coach of the year in this conference is going to be Amir Abdur Rahim, who has done outstanding at 
South Florida in year one. He came over from Kennesaw State. Um, if he doesn't win the coach of the year in the American, that's a shame. And he has to be up there for national coach of the year too. But he's not going to win national coach of the year if they're in the NIT. That's just facts. So I wouldn't pick him for national coach of the year. National coach of the year, I think, should probably be Kelvin Sampson because they're the number one team in the country right now in a year they transition to a bigger league. And they shut up some naysayers. So I would say Kelvin Sampson for national coach of the year. Although um, Abdur Rahim has to be in the conversation for that as well. Does Dusty May finally jump ship to a bigger school? We'll see. I think that Annie Kennedy's done a really good job at UAB and could very well end up in a power conference. Penny Hardaway's not leaving Memphis. Um, Aaron Fern has done really good in year one at Charlotte. Um, I actually think that Ross Hodge has done a nice job in North Texas in year one. On the flip side, hot seat. Um, So Paul Mills isn't going anywhere from Wichita State. Scott Parra at Rice, maybe, although they did move to this conference this year. And same for Steve Henson at UTSA. Those are just transition teams. Um, Adam Fisher at Temple's not going anywhere. I don't think Ron Hunter's going anywhere. They had a bad AAC play. And Ron Hunter's been there five years. Um, uh, I just don't want to believe it because I like Ron Hunter a lot. And he's one of my favorite coaches. I don't think Michael Schwartz is going anywhere from East Carolina. And I don't think Eric Conkle of Tulsa is going anywhere. I think Eric Conkle did a decent job this year, actually, despite them having a losing record in conference play. But if any coach gets let go, maybe it is Steve Henson at UTSA. He's been there eight years, and I know they just moved to this conference. But Scott Vera Rice, I think, was supposed to be better than it was. So I think Scott Vera is probably on the hottest seat. They've been disappointing Rice. Although my heart doesn't want to say uh, um, the uh, Tulane coach, Ron Hunter, but um, I think that's possible as well. All right, so that's it for the American. Next up is a really big one, the Big East. <laughs> 